So we continue with uh, the same theme about prayer. You remember Scalabrini used to say, you become a saint and everything will flourish in your hands. And then he says also that uh, the relationship between uh, saving souls is related to your sanctification. And I can say that even in my life, I had uh, quite a few experiences where I really saw with my eyes that if we dedicate time to prayer, then God will do the rest. I give you two little stories just to start because in the afternoon it's a little bit difficult to, to pay attention to philosophical uh, topics, but a few examples. I remember when I went to the, my last parish there in Our Lady of Pompeii in New York, everything was closed, locked up, you know. You, you needed at least 105 keys in order to go from one place to the other. So I said, especially because I heard uh, Pope Francis say, eh, the church should be open. So I told my people, let's open the church. No, Father, he says, the homeless are going to steal, they are going to pee in the pews, they are going to do the disasters. I said, let's uh, see, see if it is true, if your fears are true or not. So we open the church and nothing happens. As a matter of fact, many people started coming into the church for a little visit. And since it is in a very busy district, you know, people started coming in and people start lighting candles. So at the end of the week, I told my old ladies, you know that the money of the candles doubled. Oh, good father, yeah, keep the door open. Yeah, yes, that's a good idea. But Jesus wanted that door open because he wanted to speak to his people. I'll give you an, uh, a little story. One day, the, uh, the, the young man who was there in the office said, Father, Father, there are two ladies. They want to go to confession. He says, good. So I went to the church, which is attached to the office. And he says, but Father, says, they're Jewish. Okay, he says, we welcome everybody. He says, let them come in. And so I sat down with these two ladies, and I told them, listen, I'm a Catholic priest, but if you want to ask forgiveness to God, what well, I have, I give you. He says, if I have the power to forgive sins, I forgive you of your sins. Yes, Father, says, that's why we came, because we feel we need the forgiveness of God. So I said, sit down, and I explain a little bit how to go to confession. He says, we Catholics, we do this and this and this. And they say, okay, he says, whatever you do, we do. And he says, okay, so I prepared, and then they confessed their sins. We said the act of contrition together, and I gave the absolution. I says, Jesus knows what to do. Jesus is your paisano, you know, he's from your town. I says, he must do what, you know, you must uh, do what you need, because he knows you even better than I do. And so he says, oh, Father, thank you, thank you very much. And they went out very happy. I says, you know, we really feel that God has forgiven us. Good, he says, go in peace. Then, another day, I was praying in the corner there, and I hear, not far, far away, a young lady crying and crying and crying. I says, okay. I waited a few minutes. Then I went to, to her and says, you know, uh, do you want to talk? And she says, yes, Father, I'd like to talk because my life is in a shamble. It's all upside down. My husband doesn't want me. My children are driving me crazy. My job is going bad. Blah, blah, blah. So I says, okay, you came to the right place. He says, here's Jesus. He, he can help you more than anybody else. Yes, yes, Father, you are right, because, it says, I am a Jewish woman. And I tried to go to a synagogue, everything was locked up. I couldn't even find any place where I could sit down and pray. And I saw your church is open. So I says, I came in, and all of a sudden, I felt like a cold shower. I felt like I started crying like crazy, 
and I didn't know what was happening to me because all these big uh, problems in my life and they start coming out and I don't know I start crying 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 I didn't know how to stop okay he says don't worry he says good things are coming because he says if you found a little bit of comfort it means that Jesus is here helping you and then we forgot then I saw her again and again many times in church she was all in that corner sometimes crying out after a few months she comes to the office and says father I want to be baptized he says what do you mean he says yes father I've been reading the gospel of Jesus and I see that Jesus is giving the answer to all my problems actually he says I do not understand why my rabbis don't understand what Jesus is saying. They should be the first one to understand and tell us. And so he says, man, well, listen, it's not so simple. He says, Jesus gave you a gift that maybe the other people cannot receive. But you were able to receive it then. That's why you are feeling that Jesus is answering your prayers, answering your uh, your desire your problems and so he says yes father I want and you know she knew the Bible almost better than I did and uh, she was telling me you know Matthew said this John said that I says wow he says yes father I read the Bible every day because he says I found that what Jesus says is really what I feel and uh, the following Holy Saturday she was baptized now she's also almost a leader in my community. I'm saying this because if you allow Jesus to work through you, he can do wonderful things. And that's what we were talking this morning. It says if we really are able to allow Jesus to use us, then he does marvelous things. And you don't have even to, to look for it. They come to you. People are going to, uh, they are thirsty of the love of God. And wherever they find it, they go. That's why he says the apostolic work that we have to do is related to our own prayer life. It doesn't matter if you have PhDs. doesn't matter if you are smart doesn't matter if you are a very famous or popular guy. Nothing of this changes the soul, the heart of people. Who changes the heart of people is Jesus. And if you are able to allow yourself to be open and to allow Jesus to work through you, that's the real work of our apostolate. So we go back to the idea of prayer again. I'm going to give you a few practical advices for personal prayer so the first thing is that uh, we have to decide a time now first of all let us start even before the time of prayer before the time of prayer we have to somehow um, bring into prayer all our activities for instance for instance if I'm washing dishes I said Jesus I do this for you okay if I go out you not know, to buy things Jesus let me help uh, this person or I don't know you you're studying I said Jesus open my mind because I, I need you I don't understand this um, I don't know you uh, you go and see a person said Jesus help me to show your face not mine your face to that person so during the day, it should be almost like a continuous dialogue with Jesus. It says, Jesus do this, Jesus do that, Jesus help me here, Jesus help me there. Because then, when you pray, you bring everything into your prayer. Yeah. That's very important. But if you only talk to Jesus when you come to church and pray, you know, there's a lot is missing. A lot of things that you do during the day are not part of of your prayer so I will say that almost constantly during the day say, Jesus help me here Jesus help this like for instance I go in the subway sometimes you know in, uh, in New York and you see all kind of crazy people and I say listen <laughs> Lord bless that guy you know he needs your uh, your blessing 
or it says look at this poor girl you know she's looking for trouble or uh, like you know you tell Jesus what is happening in your life and I tell you it is very very interesting because I don't know something happens sometimes you say bless this poor guy and you see that all of a sudden he's getting up and he starts walking you know and uh, you say wow that blessing really worked huh? so it is important that we bring everything into prayer then the second very important thing is to establish a rhythm of prayer let me tell you for instance we eat three times a day huh? and you know in the morning in the afternoon at night we go to eat because it's something that we do normally that we do well, rhythmically that means with certain uh, time and schedule prayer is the same if you don't have a schedule of prayer you do not pray I tell you because I did that and uh, especially when in the parish and everything falls on you the less time you go to pray and then what happened you get nervous you get mad you fight with people because because your heart is not peaceful your heart is overwhelmed by too many things but if you say no it says eight o'clock in the morning I'll be there I have an appointment with Jesus Christ and so nobody else can come disturb me even if the man outside is delivering uh, you know the paper or whatever no it says this is my time with Jesus I have an appointment <coughs> at noon or especially in the afternoon I have my time with Jesus and nobody can take that away from me because that's the only way you're gonna keep praying at night eight o'clock I'm gonna say the rosary so I'm gonna make all my my appointments up to seven o'clock seven o'clock no more the next day because at eight o'clock I have my appointment so it has to be very very faithful God is faithful to us he's there waiting when you tell God eight o'clock I'll be there he's gonna be there waiting for you but if you don't go if you don't care then God is gonna turn away from us so to establish a right time for prayer is absolutely necessary I assure you you're not going to pray if you don't have your schedule of prayer and uh, in my breviary I, I made a little list of my time of prayer and I keep it there and if one day I said oh my god I didn't pray uh, yesterday then today I'm gonna be faithful to my prayer so established by yourself you have to establish your time of prayer and uh, and then stick to it and stick until the end there is a, a little story there were 25 sisters in the convent and uh, they had a meditation 30 minutes meditation and uh, <clears throat> the last sister was watching the others they were all in ecstasy they were all uh, smiling they were all happy in their prayers and she didn't feel anything so one day she went to Jesus and says, Jesus, how come, says, my sisters, they are all enjoying the prayer and I don't feel anything, I don't have anything. And so Jesus says, dear sister, you are 25, I go to each one of us, a minute each, but you always leave 20 minutes after the prayer. So when I come to you, you're already gone. That's why, he says, you don't feel anything. <laughs> I says, Ah, says, now I understand. Yes, says, because my time with you is the 25th minute. But when, uh, after 20 minutes, you go out and I cannot reach you anymore. <laughs> this says that we have to be faithful. If it is 20 minutes, 20 minutes. If it's 30, it's 30. I give you a little uh, secret of mine. To do an hour of adoration is long. Uh, I have to say, it's pretty long. I admire you do it. So what I do? I do two half hours. So it's not as heavy on me. It's easier for me. But I try to keep that. So I do half hour in the morning. Before the Mass. 
And then after hour, three o'clock in the afternoon, I have another half hour with the Vespers. And so for me, it is easier. But once you decide, you have to be faithful. There is nothing more important in prayer than fidelity. You have to be faithful to your time of prayer. The place. The place is also important. You know, only the saints are able to go in the marketplace and be able to pray. I won't, I won't be able to pray if I am in the middle of Times Square. You know, it is impossible. Because I know my uh, human uh, weakness. I know that I'll be distracted. I know that I, my mind is going to go all over the place. So you have to decide a special place. The chapel is number one. You know the Scalabrini wanted this missionary to do a meditation together in the same place, in the same chapel, together. Because, you know, he was smart, he was a saint. So you decide the place is important. The place has to be a little quiet. The place has to be conducive. For instance, some people put a little cross in the corner of your room, or if you do it in chapel, even better, you find always, why? Because even psychologically, you are kind of used to go to, the, when you go to that place, even your psyche, even your body knows that you're going to pray. That is my prayer corner. That's where I meet my God, my Jesus. And that helps us because we are made of body and soul. But if we kind of uh, make that little corner, I tell this also to the families, yeah, to the couples, get your corner, prayer corner. Because when you go there, you already know that you're going to pray. And you are almost invited, body and soul, to pray. Because that's my corner. That's the corner where I speak to my God. So place is very important. Eh? And even there, keep that same place. Because as I said, it is psychological. When you go to that place, you already feel, you're already disposed to pray. For instance, you can have a little a candle, a little icon. Or maybe you can start always with the same psalm. And the Lord is my shepherd. Eh? So you already know that is like introducing you to prayer because that sun brings you closer to God um, wasting time with God sometimes you know we priests say oh I have so many things to do I cannot waste this time but prayer is really beautiful when you just waste time for God Everybody says, I have no time, no time. But we say, no, this time I'm going to give it to God. And nobody else has to come and bother me. Because it is something very important to be able to stay at the presence of God. Even without saying anything. Even without asking anything. But you are there. And he's there. You remember the story of the, uh, says the cure of ours, you know. I'm here, he's there. He looks at me and I look at him. That's it. That's prayer. That's prayer. So you see that it's very, very important. So you have, uh, let's give you a few phrases for uh, prayer. What I mean? Prayer is, first of all, you pay attention to God. Secondly, you abandon yourself to God. God will refill you and then you can go out and share with people. So attention, you put uh, your mind into the presence of God, you abandon yourself to Him because He is the one doing everything. Then He will refill you, your heart, and then you can go out and share with others. So this is a little bit what happens during our prayer. I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about meditation because Calabrini was so strong about meditation. Eh? And uh, I think he was smart. You remember this morning we said that um, Scalabrini said if a priest does not meditate either 
he has no faith or no brain. Uh, that's very important. Why? Because for Scalabrini and for us, meditation is very important. And let me tell you that when you are in a parish, the first thing to give up is meditation. And second, the breviary. You know, as a priest, many times says, oh, I say in our Father, no, 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 no. We have an obligation. When we are ordained, we go to the bishop. The bishop is asking us, do you promise to say the breviary every day? And we say yes. So it is an obligation. It's not just, you know, optional. It says breviary is important. And meditation too. Because if you don't take time to meditate, you get lost. You don't find the road. You don't find the light. Because uh, you go from one side to the other. You respond to one emergency to the other. Instead, before everything else, sit down and look the road that you have to take. Look at the decisions you have to make. But look together with God. So it says, reflection or meditation from which prayer derives offers the following benefits. First of all, it purifies the mind. If there is something here that doesn't go right, when you meditate, it comes up right away. Mm. Second is the very source from which it originates. It corrects excesses and moderates actions. It makes life virtuous and controlled. And finally, it gives an understanding of divine and human realities. If you meditate, everything falls into place eh, in your life. If you meditate, you know where to put this, that, and that. If you do not meditate, one thing goes on top of the other, and your life is not, to be, is not going to be organized, peaceful. Because there is always something coming up. Instead, you say, no, wait a minute. Now I have to do this, now I have to do that, now I have to do that. And Jesus tells you, and tells you very clearly what you have to do or not to do. This, the efficacy of meditation for rectitude of heart and integrity of spiritual life. Uh, believe that charity grows through and feeds on meditation. So you get, first of all, meditation gives you light, understanding what you are supposed to do or not supposed to do. Secondly, meditation gives you the right place, the right perspective on things. You know, sometimes you have a worry, you know, you're organizing something, and you know if it's going to go well. And so your heart is all upside down. Meditation says, wait a minute, that's only one activity. This activity doesn't have to confuse everything else. So meditation allows you to put everything in place. And then it says, meditation is correct. Correct if there is something that's not proper or not good. In meditation you find that uh, that is not proper meditation gives you a lot of patience patience and love eh? because when you are in front of Jesus you see that after all he is going to take care of things you can help sometimes you can even be a, a limit or a problem but most of all you find inner peace and you're not going to to worry too much. You will be transformed. Eh? Let me read to you what uh, Scalavini said. <clears throat> it is only through meditation that man learns who he is and who he ought to be. How to look upon and judge all things from a Christian point of view. Should the word of God make us, makes us Christians at heart and in deeds, it must then first be transformed into love. Not only we must understand the truth, but we must love it, and we must not only love it, but we must put it into practice. Okay, so these are the three steps. First, makes us understand the truth and love. Secondly, we accept and love the truth that we understand. And thirdly, we put into practice the truth that we love. <clears throat> so he said to the priest, have a set time every day for meditation on heavenly things. And never neglect this. Do not be carried away by the absurd tendency to help others while neglecting yourselves. He who is not good with himself, how can he be good with others? 
<coughs> there are often difficulties in the way of this practice, I do not deny. But in these cases, priests provide, uh, priests provide ill for themselves and they neglect, when they neglect meditation. It, in such occasions, instead, one must remember that he should get up before sunrise to give thanks to God. It is right that you do all things to all, but while doing what must be done for the salvation of your neighbors, remember the angels ascending to God and descending to man on Jacob's stairway. Your behavior should copy this image. You too are angels of the Lord of hosts. We are the connection between God and people, God and earth. You remember the coat of arms of Scalabrini? Eh? The angels, we have to go up to God in order to bring back the graces of God. So it is uh, very, very important. Then is a, a word that says also for retreats. It says, he reminded his missionary that meditation and spiritual retreats are essential for priestly life. We must want them at all costs. And he wanted eight days of retreat. A little bit long. Eh? But finally says, in Scalabrini spirituality, meditation constitutes a fundamental element. It shows the, alt the attitude of a man who places himself in the presence of God, listens to him, thus becoming aware of the initiative of God who loves us first. So this is uh, a little bit what he was talking about meditation. And I think because it is the first uh, spiritual practice to be forgotten, especially when you go in a parish, then we have to make a solid proposal, a solid foundation here. It says, when I go out, I cannot forget my meditation. Not only because, you know, it is important, but because Scalabrini. Remember that we have a spirituality based on Scalabrini. You know, we talk about Jesuit spirituality, we talk about Franciscan spirituality. We have our own. And Scalabrini is the one who gives us the guidelines. It gives us the, the way to uh, live this type of spirituality. I'm going to go briefly on, um, on our constitutions. As I told you, you know, here you have everything necessary to become a saint. And actually, it's just the first part, because then the second part is a lot of business. But the first part is very, very important for our life. Because it is uh, very important. We read the number 38, and having been called to holiness by God in virtue of baptism, we strive for perfect charity, which means love, toward God and our fellow human beings. Okay. Then, listen to this. Our community life is at the service of our apostolic mission among the migrants. Let me tell you that uh, this sentence was misinterpreted for many years. I remember when we were used to discuss. Oh, but if you have apostolic, because it says our community life is at the service of our apostolic mission. So we used to say, if you have to do, no, visit the sick, you can give up your community life, community prayer, and go and visit the sick. That's not what the Constitution say. They say that your prayer has to strengthen your activity. So it says, our community prayer, our community life, is not uh, to uh, limit our apostolic work. Our community life is to strengthen and to make our apostolic work even better. So if we have to choose between apostolic work and prayer, what do we choose? Prayer. Oh, but the person there needs me. Jesus will take care of that person. You do first your prayer. And then you'll see that when you go to that person, it's going to be even better. And Jesus can do much more. So remember that community life is not secondary to our apostolic work. On the contrary, it is primary. And then you go out and do your apostolic work. 
Then it says, keenly aware, number 41, keenly aware that each of us is responsible for the prayer life of all, and all are responsible for the prayer life of each other. This is a very beautiful sentence. Because sometimes we are afraid to pray together. I don't know if you felt that, but sometimes I feel, even in my parish, to ask to my uh, brother priest, can we say the rosary together? I don't know, there is something like a, a little uh, shyness, or uh, I don't know what to call it. But it's difficult sometimes to ask the brother, can we pray together? Uh, in, our, uh, in my church, we pray in the morning, sometimes now during the summer, not so often, but, and then at night, at 8 o'clock, they know we say the rosary, that even lay people can come in and say the rosary together. Because it's beautiful to see those two priests uh, kneeling together and praying together. You know how much good it does to the people. Even strangers, they come in and they see those two priests there reciting the rosary together. It's very, very important because we are responsible for the prayer life of, the, of our brother. Oh, don't, uh, says, don't uh, mind your own business. No. It says, your prayer life is also my business because we are together in this. So it is important that we all insist, especially you young priests, when you go to a parish and the old pastor you know, is always on his own, says, Father, can we say lots together in the morning? Can we say the rosary of Vespers at night? You should ask. Because then even the older person says, wow, this is good news. These young people really know how to live community life and how to pray together. So it's very, very important. Then it says, uh, the daily prayer commitments of each religious are the celebration of the Eucharist. I remember when I was in the seminary, they used to say, but do we have to go to Mass every day? Yes, for many reasons, for your own good, but also because the constitutions. Scalabrini wants us to go to Mass every day. Then it says the participation of the liturgy of the hours, meditation, which according to our founders should at least half an hour, the rosary or some other Marian devotions. To say the rosary and the house is very Scalabrini. You know, Scalabrini used to say the rosary every night with his secretary and the cook and the one uh, the guiding the horses. Every night, they used to call it the domestic, you know, people in the house. Scalabrini said rosary every night with those people. And then it says, more general commitments are the annual spiritual exercises and days of recollection. This each community is bound at least one daily period of prayer in common. This is the minimum, at least one every day. Once every day, we have to be together to pray. I remember that uh, my parish is close to the uh, Brooklyn Bridge, and Father Bandini, who was a priest there, every day he used to go to the port, seaport, to welcome the immigrants. They were coming in with the boats. But he was obliged to come back early enough in the evening to pray Vespers together with the St. Raphael Society, because in that time, there was no, uh, no church yet. So you see that even though he was uh, going every day to the seaport to work on the immigrants, but he had to come back and say the prayers together. So let me, uh, then there is uh, the last point I like to talk for you. He says, out of justice and gratitude, the whole community will give them, uh, he's talking about, um, elderly and sick uh, confreres. It says, out of justice and gratitude, the whole community will give them all the necessary care, assistance, and attention to help them to, help them to grow in Christian hope. I like to remember here until uh, uh, last Christmas, we had a Father Lidio Tomasi, who was uh, a very important person. He, together with Silvano, he established the Center of Action Studies in New York. And at a certain point, he had Parkinson's. 
so he, he couldn't really take care of himself and um, one day he came to me he said um, he was living next door and he says father can can I come for lunch at your place can I stay a little bit with you can I participate in your community because the provincial is always running around the other two priests they were very busy so yes says, why not come and I saw that man almost revived because he used to come to eat with us then in the evening he used to say a rosary together with us he made friendship with some members of the parish so I saw him completely revived and he was happy until the one, uh, one day he realized that he couldn't he had trouble even eating he had trouble uh, dressing himself so <clears throat> luckily uh, his brother Silvano came and brought him back to Italy where now he's taking care of in a uh, house for an elderly priest <clears throat> but I say this is something here in the constitutions we have to be very helpful and very grateful to these priests who have given the whole life to our community and now that they cannot give anymore it's time to receive a little bit of help and support and let me conclude with uh, the notion of community uh, I don't remember where but it says uh, Bishop Scalabrini said no one individually can carry on the work that the church has given us the work among migrants you see if you look one by one uh, we can do something but then once that we are gone for instance once I retire if I don't have anybody following me all my work is finished all the things that I have started are gonna fall apart so community is very important the idea of community because first of all is uh, security for the people I give an example when we closed uh, the Church of St. Joseph in New York and uh, the Chinese were left without a church and they felt abandoned I mean we closed because uh, the diocese closed but if we had let's say a Chinese priest ready to pick up that parish you know how much good and we can do that only in community together because one by one we cannot accomplish what the church has given us as the, the, the work for migrants but together yes we can do it together we can assure the migrants that the church is going to be there all the time and when one priest is, uh, you know, is uh, too old then there is another one that comes see the importance of uh, having that understanding community is very important because it is the guarantee that the migrants are going to be taken care of even when <clears throat> I'm gone see uh, you know that uh, in uh, United States in Europe vocations are very low very low why because wherever materialism comes it destroys everything you know mother Teresa used to say that the poorest country on earth is United States because they only know to make money but money doesn't give you life money doesn't give you happiness money doesn't give you anything actually money creates problem because it makes competition one person against the other so you see that it is important to understand that our community is able to carry on this work so now for instance we need priests in the United States because there are many communities that do not have any more than priests so we have now you guys from the Orient eh? we come and take care of migrants even in the West uh, when I go maybe there won't be any another Italian priest for the church where I am now Our Lady Pompeii which is the only Italian church in the whole island of Manhattan but one of you who knows Italian can go there and continue see it, because because there is a community because I belong to a community 
you belong to the same community. So you see that <coughs> the idea of community is fundamental. Because by our own, our, our own uh, effort, we can do something. But then, once that I'm finished, the whole thing is going to fall apart. Instead, it is the community that continues and uh, keep the work among migrants going. So let's uh, go back to the idea. Tomorrow we're going to change a little bit topic, but in the same line, uh, I want you to really understand that prayer is the basis for everything. No prayer, no work, no grace. Prayer, then God will give you work, uh, it will give you a lot of satisfaction, a lot of graces. As I said, I repeat again the beautiful phrase of Scalabrini, if you become saints, everything that you do will flourish in your hands.